Cheers, and welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. Yes, Drew's here for free beer. Well, free beer every day. Free uh, beer, but I'm not as excited about this one, I'll say. Yeah, he's not a big stout fan, and this is all about the Franken stout. And yeah, and I've been putting the equipment up onto the side of us to show you what we brewed this stuff on. Didn't mention that in the IPA we did, but hey, I want to make sure you understand what we brewed it on, and that way it kind of helps, you know, if you haven't seen the first video, which if you haven't seen it, you really need to go see it. But before you go see it, don't forget, like, subscribe, keep sharing. Thank you. Okay, let's jump right into this. Frankenstout. Now, I did make it easy on him. I kept the ABV on the lower side for him. And I say lower side, lower side for, like, my type yeah. of brewing. <laughs> this might be a little high for some people. But on the Frankenstout, quite literally, and it is a... Oatmeal stout with lactose, and I'm lactose intolerant, but I can tolerate a little bit. But this was based on a stout that I brewed many, a couple, I'd say many, a couple years back, that I called the smoothest stout ever, and had people bragging to me that it was so smooth, and then I would show them the title was smooth stout. I was like, hey, cool. Worked out. Yeah, it worked out just fine. But Franken stout yeast, yes. What happens if you brew a stout and decide to pitch a yeast, and you go, I don't know what yeast I want to pitch. You know Let me try all of them. Yeah. Let me try all 96 yeasts that White Labs has. Well, guess what? White Labs thought about you. You don't have to buy 96 yeasts. You can buy one that has all 96 in it. Yeah, quite literally. Here, <laughs> this is something crazy I would do, and White Labs did it. So I'm like, I would just like to know who at White Labs thought this was a brilliant idea because I like it. And other people might have went, what the hell do you want to do? <laughs> Are you insane? Um, and then I talked to him about the, the limits and I kind of pushed the limits a little beyond where I probably was allowed to push it from what they said I should do. And yeah, this is the result. So it's either going to be really good or really we're going to be taking Tim out to the hospital oh, and God. maybe me following behind. I don't know. Um, I will tell you, the yeast at 75 degrees Fahrenheit did get an infection. Yes, one of my first infections in years, and I was pissed. I pulled it, I left the very top layer, and I'm pretty sure it's a uh, lactic. Whatever, whatever the bacteria is that causes it to go sour. But yeah, so I was pissed and I pulled it. I put it in the keg. I carbonated everything. I've been checking it. I actually opened it. Yeah, I know something you're not supposed to do. It looks fine. It looks perfect. So I'm good. And the reason I opened it wasn't really <laughs> to check. Fly. Wasn't to check the infection, but because my floating dip tube accidentally fell inside because I didn't put it all the way up. So I had to put another one in there because I didn't want to fish it out and cause another infection. But yeah, so we use 96 different yeasts and let's take it another step. We'll ferment one of the stouts at 75 degrees Fahrenheit and catch an infection. And then we'll ferment the other one at 55 degrees. And, and it's it didn't, fine. It didn't catch an infection. It was too cold. So. We're gonna see if there's any major differences. If you haven't seen the IPA video, yeah, you should go see that. I can't put that up here because I already told you to go check out the other video. But yeah, we found a major difference with the IPAs. They were yeah, very, very different. Very different beers. And the only difference was temperature, right? Yeah, and it was yeah. technically, I say 20 degrees of separation, but it started at 25. I started right at 50 degrees and 75, and I ramped that 55, or 50 up to 55, and I just kept the 75 at 75 and just left it there the whole time. And I dry hopped on the IPAs. I didn't dry hop on the stouts. The stouts did have Maris, it was mainly Maris Otter, some flaked oats, some Munich, dark Munich, some biscuit malt, chocolate wheat, roasted barley, black patten, carafa special two, milk sugar, six ounces, and then a little bit of warrior um, hops just for bittering to get it up to around 31.8 to balance everything out. And then we pitched the Franken stout. And I know that was a complex beer recipe, which I showed you in the first video. If you hadn't gone and seen it, that's where you gotta go to see it. But it just was so smooth, so I had to repeat the same thing. Let's stop this video and jump on over, grab a glass, and we'll be instantly right back. back for you. It'll take us a few minutes. Okay, as you can see, I used a lot of Clarity Firm. Super clear, you can see right through it. It's black as night. I didn't use any yeah. damn Clarity Firm. Actually, I did, yeah. I did put Clarity Firm in it. I did oh, not put any, no, I didn't put any um, gelatin. And the reason I use Clarity Firm is I'm pulling out some of the lact or not lactose, what is it? Uh, gluten. So when I share this, I don't have to worry about anybody. I mean, granted, now, this is what I expected anyway. Uh, yeah, true. Style, so. and now, now, I don't know if you can tell, but can you tell which one is 75 Fahrenheit and which one's 55? We could tell with the IPAs. <laughs> Flavor-wise, we haven't even tried yet. But well, remember one of them was clearer than the other two. Yes, that's right. The 75 was foggy and the 55 was clear. 
Yeah, good luck. Yeah, I can't tell. Good luck. I can't tell. 75 is on our right, your left. 55 is on our left, your right. And we're gonna start with 55. the one on the left, which is at 5.8%. We were at 1.054, ended at 1.010. Over here, we ended at 1.009. Very, very minor difference. So we're at 5.8 and 5.9. Hey, anything under six is really good for you. Yeah. <laughs> it's a miracle for me. <laughs> Let's go with this one first. I have a feeling even though he doesn't like stouts, this will be one of the smoothest ones he ever has. You know what? It does have the roast flavor that I don't like, obviously, because <laughs> it's a stout. Well, not because it's a stout, but because it has... I think every stout has that flavor. Roasted barley and black patent, which can give you that. The chocolate wheat usually doesn't really give you much of a roasted flavor because it's wheat and not the regular malt. The malt, the regular uh, barley does. I will say. And Carafa Special too does a little. It is very smooth. Very smooth? Very smooth. Um, the only stout I've ever kind of, sort of liked was the... Um, the Rasputin. Ah, yes. But that it's been was a while. pretty good. That's a very strong this style. This is much smoother than that. Yeah. <laughs> I would hope that's not a smooth style. And definitely that's far and away better than a Guinness to me. So. Yeah, he did say it probably would be even better if I put it on nitro. So, which makes it a little more frothy. Yeah. The key here for me is I do get a hint of roast. It's not strong. It's nice. I believe the key to making this really smooth is that I have two pounds, if I remember right, yeah, two pounds of flaked oatmeal and the lactose. Six ounces of milk sugar is really not that much. It's 3.4% to the whole recipe, but it gives it that subtle back sweetening that's so subtle that it just makes it kind of more palatable and smoother. Yeah. And it gives the flavors a little more roundness to them because if you've ever had coffee, I know everybody's looking at me going, duh. Okay, he hates coffee. I hate coffee. Yeah. <laughs> if you've ever had coffee and you, I drink mine black, but if you add sugar to it, you can taste so so much more going on in that. If you get a really black, black tea and you add sugar, it's not quite as noticeable, but you will notice more flavor nuances within that tea. That sugar helps to enhance those flavors and bring them out a little bit more. It has a very nice mellow kind of roast scent to it. I mean, it's got a nice, the chocolate isn't in your face. The chocolate's just kind of a backbone that's very smooth and light. And that's mainly from the chocolate wheat. The carafe is definitely helping a little there too, but it's just very mild. I think you're right. That sweetness is really helping me being like, okay, it's not, what I and oatmeal has a natural sweetness too, which is really wild. Plus you turn around and you get Maris Otter. Maris Otter was literally, what was that, 50, 58% of the recipe. Maris Otter is one of the darkest base malts you can use. And it's got a light nutty taste to it. We're well, not gonna notice pecans or peanuts or anything like that. That that flavor though, just kind of puts a nice foundation for everything to set on top of it. I kind of like any wabi flavor, yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's it's the foundation. And then you put all these other flavors that stand out and are a bit much more pronounced. And then you kind of, kind of I won't say muddle, but blend them together and then give them some sort of smooth smoothness like the oatmeal. And then you enhance the flavor contrast a little bit with a little lactose. And suddenly you're like, dude, this is good. I like this. And it becomes an extremely drinkable stout. And I'm not a huge stout fan. He's not a stout fan at all, but I love this stout. <laughs> not bad. That's pretty good coming from a non-stout fan. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I could drink this all night. We're going over to the 75. If for some reason you do see this video, you know we survived and we didn't die, but you know, Maybe somebody posted it and you see the ambulance pulling up and where we, we do have a garage, I can just drag us out, but yeah. yeah. I doesn't of, I doesn't mean, look infected. Should I grab some water first? So sure. Quick intermission. We're back and we're cleansed. Yeah. <laughs> it was water we drank, <laughs> no other type of cleansing. Okay, so we're going to the 75. Only thing different about here, same yeast, same everything. It was fermented at 75. It did get infection, so who knows? Maybe it'll be a sour stout. I don't know. It smells weird compared to that. It smells the same almost. I'm 54 years old. My scent has probably been compared to his, but. It's got almost like a little bit more of a toffee smell to me. Okay. This is 
more of a roast. Okay. And I did notice a little more, a little hint of caramel and toffee over there, but it was not, it was very minor, very, very minor. I'm gonna say this one's probably still infected. It's weird. It's got a tang. It's weird. It's got a weird tang. So I'm this might be- the, like, I'm getting more of the caramel kind of toffee flavor to it. But I feel like it's not supposed to taste like that. No, it's got a tang. It's like, <laughs> almost like a sour stout. Yeah, and nobody, nobody yeah, makes sour stouts that I've seen. So we're gonna go with this one still infected. And sadly, it's a bust on the comparison in flavor. The flavor is interesting. <laughs> Yeah, it, and it doesn't stout. taste bad. It just tastes weird, very weird. It's just like, yeah, something's wrong with it's it. It's kind of like a sour stout. Yeah, I'd agree with you. Yeah, then, I mean, if you like sour stouts, hey, do 75 <laughs> degrees and get infected, however it got infected. I have a feeling I know how it got infected. I used one of the for monsters and the little washers and that thing that turns in and out. I have scrubbed the hell out of those, but I have noticed occasionally it doesn't pass my inspection. I have to reclean it. So there's a possibility that something was in there that I missed, and that's how it got infected. So I shouldn't because, drink this, right? No, it's not gonna, it might upset your stomach, but other than that, it's not gonna no. kill you. Mm -hmm. But, so my feeling here is that I may slowly phase those for monsters out. Or I'm gonna have to buy a lot of the little, little spouts and keep I'm swapping them out. every single, buying them in bulk is pretty cheap, but kind of wasteful, but yeah, or, I don't know, if y'all have a way to really, really clean the spouts on those things, you'll let me know in the comments below because, yeah, this kind of sucks. I was really looking forward to tasting the differences. And that tang. Well, they're very different. Oh, they're very they're different. They're very different. <laughs> Sour stout. Um, I just feel like I'm not supposed to drink this. It's just got a so. weird tang. And that weird tang isn't, like, it isn't bad. It's just weird because you're not and used to it. It's weird enough that I'm like, I don't think I should drink the rest of that. So. It's not even as bad as me picking up someone's Coke, which I don't drink soda, I haven't drank Coke in like 30 years, minus I do drink tea and occasionally the glasses get mixed and I reach over and go, oh, that would be much worse. This is just, it's weird, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So we're gonna say this is success. This is gonna sadly end up down the drain. Yeah, grain to drain, it looks pretty, it's nice. I could use it for maybe cooking, but I'm not gonna drink it. Yeah, maybe. And actually to cleanse the palate. Again, this is pretty smooth. Again, I'm not, not a, stout, a stout person. Not a stout fan at all. But it's smooth, it's fine. I, if someone said this is the only beer there, I'd still drink it. Yeah, and, and keep in mind, he drank Rasputin, he's 28. I think that was when you were like 22? Yeah, I think so. So it's been quite it's been a while, while and he doesn't really care I've for stouts anymore. I've had a Guinness anymore. in the meantime here and there. Okay. But like, and I don't, I wanted And to. I don't really care for Guinness. I like Guinness Extra Stout. That's a really good beer. Mm -hmm. So. Cheers, don't forget like, subscribe, keep sharing, if nothing else, because maybe we poisoned ourselves, I don't know. You know, and if you really wanna have fun, yeah, White Labs, 96 different yeasts, and instead of buying all 96, you buy one, and just throw it in there and go, what the hell, let's see what happens. Do whatever you want, yeah. Yeah, and you never know which yeast is really gonna take off or which group of yeast. But smelling this compared to other yeast packets was bizarre. I could smell like all kinds of different yeasts that I normally would expect. Like the wheat, I can, I, I have a distinct smell with wheat yeast. I have a distinct smell with most Belgian yeasts. I have a very distinct smell with some of the lagers. Now, things like Chico, White Labs, eh, smells a little like paste or very basic. It has almost no smell. Oh, so okay. yeah, it's, it's just like, there's almost no smell. But yeah, this was a crazy one to smell. And actually I could probably open it up. And it doesn't have much. It's been sitting at room temp. Yeah. Doesn't smell as good as it did that day. And that day was weird too. It was all over the place. So, but hey, thank you. I appreciate you joining us. Cheers. And thank you again for joining us here at Bitter Reality Brewing. Thank you. Yeah, that one's going down the drain. Yeah. <laughs>